Hello, my name is Angela Taft and I'm a Professor of Health Sciences at La Trobe University in Melbourne, Australia. I'm discussing our paper about screening women for intimate partner violence. This summarises one of a group of Cochrane systematic reviews of interventions to prevent or reduce partner violence against women in healthcare settings. It's a collaboration between Australian, American and UK scholars. Intimate partner violence is a serious breach of human rights that damages individuals, their children, communities and whole societies. Women in their reproductive years are the majority of victims. Globally, one in three or four women have been physically or sexually abused by a partner in their lifetime. The most common consequences of such violence include poor mental and physical health, poor pregnancy outcomes and premature death, usually murder. As a consequence of their poorer health, abused women are frequent attenders at healthcare settings, requiring a response from clinicians. Intimate partner violence is one of the most stigmatised issues in our society. Women experiencing abuse feel ashamed and they find it very difficult to talk about their experience. Yet, they identify doctors as the professionals they would be most willing to disclose to. So, as a GP or as a family doctor, I feel I have a responsibility to ask women about abuse. And that's particularly important because that otherwise I don't have the opportunity to provide support around the problem, but also because we now have evidence for effective interventions after disclosure, be they expert domestic violence advocacy support or psychological support. The question we're tackling in this uh, systematic review is whether universal screening, asking all women in all healthcare settings about abuse is effective and safe. This is actually a very controversial issue um, internationally. In the United States, there is a policy, a national policy for doctors and um, other healthcare professionals to screen all women for uh, partner violence. In Canada and the United Kingdom, there is uh, no such policy. In fact, there's a recommendation from national guidelines not to do so, as there is in the WHO uh, um, partner violence guidelines, where there's a recommendation not to screen um, women for abuse. We undertook a systematic review and meta-analysis of randomised or quasi-randomised trials addressing partner violence screening effectiveness. Identification, referral to support agencies, further violence, well-being and harm were our outcome measures. We only included studies where clinicians in the intervention arm personally conducted the screening or were informed of the screening result at the time of consultation. And these were compared with usual care or no screening. We did exclude studies of screening that were followed by structured interventions such as advocacy or therapies as we couldn't then assess the effect of screening and referral alone. You can find more details of our method in the paper. We identified 11 eligible trials, all conducted only in high income countries involving over 13,000 women. In six pool studies with over 3,500 women, we found screening doubled identification of partner violence, particularly in antenatal settings, where identification was more than fourfold. Overall, this represents an absolute benefit of 43 per thousand screened women. Based on only three studies, with about 1,400 women, we found no evidence that screening significantly increases referrals to domestic violence support services, although the trend is to an increase among a small number of screened women more likely to be referred. Only two studies measured women's experience of violence after screening, from three to 18 months afterwards, and found no reduction in partner violence and no increase in well-being. From this systematic review, we can conclude that screening for intimate partner violence of women in healthcare settings increases identification rate of those experiencing violence. There is a mismatch though between the rates of identification in the trials 
and the high prevalence of partner violence in clinical populations. We found one study that measured safety of screening, and that was reassuring in that it suggested the screening is safe, but it is just one study. We did not find that uh, screening improved referral rates to those agencies that can provide expert support and advocacy to women experiencing violence, nor did we find that there was a reduction in violence following screening. What is missing uh, in the, the literature and in these trials is uh, a head-to-head -head comparison between other methods of identifying women who are experiencing intimate partner violence. Specifically, there is no head-to-head -head comparison between a system of clinical inquiry or case finding in other words, me as a, a doctor asking women in relation to particular symptoms or conditions that they're presenting, such as anxiety, depression, a chronic pain, or, or difficulty sleeping. Until those comparisons are done, we cannot say that screening is the best method of identifying women experiencing intimate partner violence. On the basis of this review, and consistent with recommendations in the WHO and NICE domestic violence guidelines, a policy of universal screening in healthcare settings cannot yet be justified. The attention of further research and policy must shift to improving the training of clinicians about domestic violence, linking healthcare services to domestic violence support agencies, and further developing interventions for survivors of domestic violence after disclosure, particularly in low- and middle-income countries.